Hello and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be taking this cashmere jumper, which I bought from Vinted for £9. And there's nothing wrong with it, apart from the fact that it's this kind of very pale colour that just somehow isn't flattering in cashmere. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to dye it with willow hair. And hopefully that will give me a beautiful kind of yellowy mustard colour. This is a, a very similar jumper that I did and I dyed that with bracken. It's given me a really nice kind of honey caramel colour, which I know that I will use a lot more layering up in the winter when it's quite cold down in the studio here. The first thing that I did when I got it was that I weighed the jumper and I know that it's 200 grams. And then I washed it in a wool soap and rinsed it really well. And that is just to get off any oils. I don't know how this jumper has been treated. It's obviously not been worn an awful lot. Um, but washing it and then just leaving it damp is the first stage. The next stage will be mordanting it with alum. That's an aluminium potassium sulfate. That's what I have in my jar here. And I want to mordant it at 10% the weight of the dry fibres. So 10% of the 200 grams, nice and easy, 20 grams. So I'm first of all going to dissolve the alum in warm water. Put my mug on there. 230 and add in 20 grams of alum and this is kind of a crystallized thing in there. So four grams perfect and I'm going to dissolve it first in hot water from my kettle Pour that into the mug. And let it all dissolve. And that will take about 10 minutes. The most important thing, if you are dyeing anything that is cashmere, which is a very, very delicate, uh, fibre. It gets its softness because it's got all of these fluffy um, fibres coming out and there is the tendency for them to kind of knit together which is why you hand wash um, cashmere. What we're going to have to do is to really protect that. So the cashmere is going to just be never be in anything other than kind of warmish water, cool or warmish water. Um, and I'm not going to be moving it around a lot because that will be the quickest way to felt it. So I'm going to leave my alum to dissolve, put back my jar on the shelf, and I'm going to find something that I can use to modern this jumper nice and safely in. Modenting, I'm going to use uh, one of my dye pans, which I've cleaned very carefully. You can also use a plastic box or a glass bowl, something that's not reactive. So this is stainless steel and it will be perfectly fine. First thing I'm going to do is pour in the hot water that had the alum in it. And then I'm going to pour in some cold water. Right, a bit. And then I'm going to add the jumper. And in adding the jumper, the main thing is to be very, very gentle. So keep it supported, just put it gently under the surface of the water. You want to make sure that the mordant is going all the way into the jumper, but you don't want to be doing this kind of as you're washing it. Um, just move it very, very gentle, very gently around and keep it underneath that modern tank liquid. You want to leave it there 
for I would say 24 hours. Just keep it at cold temperature and a long cold modern thing will be more effective than if you tried to heat it up and drive it into the fibres. Just put it somewhere until tomorrow. And now while this jumper steeps gently in its mordant, I'm going to go out and collect some Rose Bay Willow Herb to set up a dye pot. Do you want to come along? This is Rose Bay Willow Herb. It is a fantastic dye plant. What we're going to want is these leaves. I'm going to chop a great pile of this and then take it back into the studio and make a dye pot. Bay Willow Herb, all of the dye pigment is in the leaves. So I'm just going to take off all the leaves from here. I don't need the stems. And I'm putting them into a kind of a big kind of muslin bag or pillowcase. And that just keeps them neat in the dye pot. It's much easier to take this out of the dye pot than it is to strain it. So I'm working with things like this. It's really nice and easy just to take the leaves off. It doesn't matter if you get some of the, the sort of like small stems, but you don't particularly want the big stems like this. And then you want at least the same weight as your jumper. But really, you know, as much within reason as you can get. One thing about Rose Bay Willow Herb is that it's a uh, plant of wastelands. It's a um, plant of newly disturbed ground and get along so the size of railways and it's not a plant that is in uh, short supply. However it is a plant that does have um, some very wonderful moths that uh, lay their eggs and have their caterpillars on it. And it's the elephant hawk moth. And when you see the elephant hawk moth, it's pink and um, fluorescent green. And you think, goodness, what earth can that be camouflaged on? And of course, what it's camouflaged on is these amazing flowers. So, even though there is lots and lots of Rose Bay Willow Herb, and it's something that I deliberately encourage in my garden um, to don't go, you know, picking great amounts of it. Just pick what you need. And in this case, it's between 200 grams and I would say about six or 700 grams of leaves. So I'm going to fill this bag and that's what I'm going to use for the dyeing. Right. There they are. All of the leaves into the bag. You can see how this is going to be like a giant tea bag in my dye pot. All of the colour is going to come out of those leaves through the bag and then when it's been steeping for long enough I was going to pull the whole thing out. Now I'm going to take these back to my dead hedge compost. This is my main dye pot. I have some water in here. I fill it about two thirds up. So, and then I'm going to add in a tablespoon two, two tablespoons of washing soda. What this does is it alkalizes the water, it gives it a different pH, it changes the pH, makes it alkali. And what I find is that if you are uh, dying with leaves that give a yellow, having alkali water just gets a deeper shade, gets more of that pigment 
out into the pan. So I'm going to let that float in there. Chop it up a wee bit more. My giant tea bag. And then oh, onto my stove. I'll leave it, leave it to heat up to a simmer. Go and get it a pan lid. And then that will, when it comes to a simmer, I'm going to leave it to simmer for around about half an hour, have a look at the colour, and then leave it to cool overnight. So I have my cashmere jumper that has now been mordanted in the alum. And I have my dye pot over there. One more step for the mordant. And that is to add in this. This is cream of tartar. And I'm going to add in um, 12 grams. So that's 6% weight of fibre. And I happen to know that, that is two spoonfuls of this. But there's something that's really useful, actually. If you are going to be dyeing a lot of things, um, just find out, sort of clock it in your head, how much a measurement uh, is, like how much is a spoon of alum, how much is that. It just saves all of that measuring. So what the cream of tartar does, and some people add it in when they modern, and I add it in afterwards as a rinse. Um, what it does is it just kind of protects all of the very soft fibres of the cashmere. So I'm just going to dip that in there. That and put it to one side while I sort out the dye pan. This oh, is my dye pan of um, willow herb, which has been steeping overnight. And let me see what kind of colour it is. Right, I don't know whether you can see this. Look. Oh, what a beautiful dark colour that is. Yeah. The main thing that I need to do now, apart from take out my bag, do, find the top of my bag. Ah, I don't want to just tip all of the dye stuff into the pot by mistake. Right, so this is my bag of willow herb. that good colour out. And then these leaves will be able to go onto the compost heap. Okay, I'll just pop that into my jug. Now the really important thing is, can you remember we um, put in some uh, washing soda into the pot to bring out those yellows? Well that will mean that this is still very, very alkaline. Uh, so it's going a dark, kind of bluey green on my pH strip. If I put the cashmere into that, it would make the cashmere really rough. And that is not the point. So I need to make this dye pot neutral. What I'm going to do that is to add in some acid in the form of vinegar. Right, so this is just plain distilled white cheap vinegar. Add in a good slosh. It's not possible to be um, completely accurate about this in advance. It's going to be a bit trial and error. The reason for that is that just boiling those leaves or simmering those leaves in the liquid will have made it slightly acidic. Will have moved moved it slightly that way. So let's try another bit of paper. And this looks much more promising. It's just yellow on the paper. So if I do that um, on the, the thing, that's probably about neutral. But just to double check that that was complete, stir it right round. Yeah, brilliant. 
So that's ready to go. Put the lid back on my lid. Now I think this has had enough time. So I'm going to gently squeeze out some of that extra excess liquid. Put it back to kind of vague jumper shape and start to dip. The reason I do this is that I don't want there to be any folds or gaps um, where the dye doesn't get to. So first of all, I'll dip it that way around and then I'll just turn it over and dip it around, open it out, make sure that the arm's nicely there and then I will just leave it. That is going to be left in this pot for about eight to ten hours and then we'll have a look at the colour when it's finished. Or you could just leave it overnight. It's going to be quite happy with that. But you can see already it's beginning to take on a nice yellow. Right, the jumper has taken on beautiful amount of colour. Look at this. So much better than that rather peely wally beige grey cream that it started off as. I'm going to gently squeeze out some of that dye. But what, I'm still really aware that if I start moving it around, it could felt so easily. So, put this pan here, and I'm going to just open it out and kind of drape it into my pan. It doesn't have to be a pan, it could be a big bowl or a plastic box or anything like that. So you want it so that it looks like this. And then, I'm going to gently pour water on the top of that a few times to rinse it. So I can put my pan of dye away and I'll go and get some water from the water bottle. Right, here's my water, pan, and I'm just very, very gently pouring in that water. do is it will wash off a lot of that dye and then I'm going to just dry it. It won't be completely rinsed but I'm going to dry it and I'm going to leave it to kind of cure for a week or so. Could be longer. Just for any of the dye to settle into the fibres really well and then at that point I'll give it a final wash and it will be the right colour. Now I want to show you the colour that I have at the moment. Now remember this is the wet colour, it will dye lighter. But look at that, just the most glorious mustardy yellow cashmere jumper. And I'm going to dry it a towel and then leave it to dry and I'll show you the final bit as the, um, at the end of the video. Now if you want the download that lists all of the steps that I did to change this from a very dreary jumper into something that is going to be absolutely gorgeous, um, I'll put them under the video, you can just sign up and get the download sheet. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm now going to go and dry my jumper. And this is how the cashmere jumper has turned out. These have now been washed and dried. And you can see it's a really lovely colour that you get from Willow Herb. It's a good mustardy colour. And this is a dress 
that I wear most often in the studio. So I'll be able to swap my t-shirts for something that's a bit more snuggly as soon as we get into autumn. Um, so this is kind of the, the round necked one. And then this one is the polo neck. Um, so I'll be very, very warm. <laughs> 